Hi everyone, Pete Calamain here. I hope you're having an awesome day. So in today's video, I would like to give you some basic guidelines on EMC compliance. Of course, we can make a full course, let's say, about every aspect of EMC. This is going to be the bare basics, but the, the simple basics to help you understand how you can make an EMC compliant design and what to look for in first instance. Of course, afterwards, while making designs, you learn, you learn more, you know, the, the, the more specific tricks. But today I want to show you a bit about the basics. So basically, there's three important things here. First of all, you need to think about shielding, shielding tracks and conductors. Uh, so by using metal boxes, for instance, a Faraday cage, you make sure that no noise, let's say, can enter your circuit. Now, while you're shielding a circuit, um, more energy will be pushed out via the cabling. So at that moment, you would also need to start about thinking about filtering. So filtering is the next step to consider. And afterwards, if you're filtering, of course, the energy has to travel from that high potential to the ground as well. So you need to think about earthing. And these are really the three main basic principles that will govern a good uh, EMC compliant design. Think about shielding first, then filtering, then earthing. Now in this video, I'm quickly going to tackle a couple of examples. We won't go too much into the theory. I want to show you practical examples, um, how you can lay out for EMC compliance. So let's dive into it. And again, all these things are based on the three principles we've seen. You see it indicated over here. It's about earthing, shielding, filtering. Let's dive into it. So on the left picture over here, you see a ground grid and vias. The idea is that you want the, low, the impedance of these connections to be as low as possible. So if you have only grids or if you're using planes, uh, in fact, you want to use as much vias as possible to have this impedance as low as possible. And the reason why is you can easily see that on the right hand side as well. So you want to avoid long return paths. Um, so every pin, if you can draw it directly or connect it directly to the ground plane, that is recommended to do it. If you do not do that, then in fact you are creating a, a small loop. Uh, you can call that a ground loop. And the effect of that could be that there is already some potential building up on the ground pin. Um, so if I indicate that on this ground pin, there could already be some potential built up. So it's important uh, to keep this in mind and to try and use always direct connections to the ground. So in our design, we have done that uh, as much as possible, let's say. So if I look at the MCU, every ground connection is taken directly uh, as shortly as possible to the ground. So over here, over here as well, over here as well. Then um, here we have been using a ground plane. So this plane. What you could perfectly do is use extra vias over here. I have not included that, um, but you could use much more vias than we have right now. So there's a few vias connecting this ground plane to the ground, but you can do some more. So then um, you could use Faraday cages. So there's two options there. We have been discussing that in the schematic design phase, but now is a good time to recap it or to, to resummarize these. So you can place vias along a specific area. So if there is a, um, a component that is quite susceptible to noise inside here, you could place a via fence around it so that it is shielded. They call that a guard ring. So you see these guard rings over here as well. You could use extra copper there um, in the top layer, bottom layer, and maybe intermediate layers, layers as well to really have a nice guard ring. Um, and also you could use these shielding covers or cans. Now in our design, um, we are quite lucky. The components that we are using are already shielded. So we have this radio module that is a shielded module. We have a power supply module over here. That one is shielded. We have another one that is shielded over here. So the only thing let's say that is unshielded is this microcontroller, but there will not be any high frequent signals or noise interfering there. Um, so in this design, there is no real need to, to make a special fence around some components. If you would have, let's say, um, a switching power supply, switch mode power supply over here that is exposed without a can, so without a, a metal shield, you could make via trenches around it to decouple that. And you could even use an external shield to, to put that on top as well. So these would be options that you could include. But again, in our design example, um, there is no real need for that. 
then for layer board so um, if we refer to our design over here so I have my top layer then the second layer is the ground layer then there's a VDD layer and a bottom layer. So inherently by this layer stack, we have already some extra shielding between top signal layers and bottom signal layers. So that's a very interesting thing. And it's a, let's say, relatively cheap thing to do. And then the coupling capacitors close to the devices. So this is something that already starts in your schematic design, of course. You need to think about placing these decoupling capacitors. But then in your um, design as well, what we try to do is to be as close as possible with decoupling. So what I can think of, for example, is over here, we have a radio module, the decoupling for that module, we want to place it as close as possible to that module. And the same is true here um, for, let's say, our MCU. We have tried to decouple that as close as possible. So here is our decoupling capacitor. The inductor, because of the larger size, had to be a bit further. So that's not... 100% ideal, um, but you need to make some trade-offs. Over here, again, the coupling is quite close to the component. Uh, the BME680, same story, the coupling. Uh, there's two ways of decoupling over here, two places where we decouple, but that's all quite close to the component. So very important, let's say also cheap step to do for EMC compliance is placing these decoupling capacitors because that's one of the basic principles. It's filtering that you are achieving with that. So I hope this video was interesting for you and you got some value out of it. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you like the channel, feel free to subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.